we have the Solar Edge Nexus battery block. This is what it looks like. It is so light and easy to move. Uh, this one doesn't have any chemistry in it, so it's a little bit lighter yeah. than what you will get. So we're in the middle of alpha testing right now. We're about to start our beta testing, but it is so easy to install. So once you set it into position, you're gonna take your handles and move it to the next battery block. Uh, but before you grab the next battery block, you should level it and get it in position. So there's two things that you need to do to do that. The first is the bubble level, which comes on the battery itself. So we already give you the level. The second thing you need is the wall tilt bracket. So the tilt bracket has a, um, has a no-go, go indicator right here. All right, uh, almost, okay. And so this basically tells you the distance that you need to put the battery block to the wall. So I'm just gonna rest it in position and then uh, say, oh, I need to move it forward a little bit. So I already took the uh, red cap off of the bottom of this battery block. All right, let's see if we can get the clip. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this into position. Got your microphone ready? Got the microphone ready. Did you get it? Got it. it was fast. <laughs> all right. So we have just completed all of our DC wiring, all of our communication wiring. And now we have a 10 kilowatt hour battery block. Now that this is into position, we're going to use our Nexus link. And the Nexus link provides us a lot of cooling for the battery system. All right. So the Nexus link is a BMS of BMSs. Looks like this. And make sure my quick connector is open. All right, now I've done all of my DC wiring and I've created a battery. So the Nexus Link, if you wanted your inverter installed in a different location than where the battery is, you would stop right here and you'd flip up this antenna if you need to and you'd run some DC wires from the battery to the inverter. But we made it so you can stack the inverter right on top of this battery. So I, I made these two little notches on top of the link. So all you have to do is basically set this into position, grab your level, zip it into place, <laughs> and now you're good to go. All right, now this bracket is in position. It doesn't need to go anywhere. We're gonna set the inverter on top. So the uh, it's got some really comfortable handholds so you can get your hand back here without hurting it. You can get your hands mm -hmm. underneath without pinching them. Mm -hmm. And so like, I really wanted to make it easy and comfortable to hold without danger of pinching yourself. Additionally, one thing that I want to point out is look at this nice, robust aluminum chassis. Yeah. So the whole inverter mm -hmm. has become a heat sink. It helps cool the inverter. Uh, what that does is it allows us to get up to higher power classifications now. Mm -hmm. So this guy allows 13 kilowatts on grid, 14.5 wow. kilowatts while in backup. One of the things that I absolutely love is the Lego style terminals. Oh yeah, these guys. Yeah. So n when you're wiring stuff, like you no know more torquing requirements. Let's say you had your DC conduit coming down the right hand side of this. Because mm -hmm. that's just where you put it. We have a wire tunnel now and a lot of space to put these wires in. So you can run these wires all the way across here so you can cable manage the wires and have them in this tunnel. And so now we allow pass through for your DC and AC conductors if you need that. These have the our antennas included. So you have a cellular antenna and a energy net, excuse me, the solar edge home network antenna and a, a Wi-Fi antenna. So if you wanna connect it, the homeowner's Wi-Fi, you can do that. And we have fallback communication, which means, let's say the cell tower goes down for whatever reason, it'll fall back to Wi-Fi. 